Hello, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today we will discuss about MVC5 and its architecture, life cycle and features. Okay, so without wasting time, let's move ahead. So in this session we will learn what is MVC and why we should use MVC, what is MVC architecture, workflow, what is MVC life cycle, its features and especially what is new in MVC5 on when to use MVC. So recommendation is given below. You can also watch ASP.NET Framework versus ASP.NET Core. You can also check my video on ASP.NET Blazor, which is a latest architecture from Microsoft. Okay, and all the sources available on my blog. Okay, so let's start. So what is MVC? MVC is Model View Controller, and it's an architectural pattern, and it separates or decouples an application into three main groups of component: user interface. That we can see or you can see this display template that is called view and the data that we call model and application logic written in controller okay for achieving a clean separation of concern developer mostly use model view controller okay mvc is easier to code debug and test model view controller that has a single job okay so it is also playing the role for single responsibility principle it is also supported on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS as well. ASP.NET MVC is an alternative and complement to a web form. Okay, you wouldn't be dealing with pages, controls, postback, or view state, or complicated ASP.NET event lifecycle. Okay, ASP.NET MVC framework is a lightweight, highly testable presentation framework. It is more difficult to update, test, and debug code that has dependencies or is spread across two or more than these areas because if there is more dependency then it will be more complexity will be there for example if presentation code and business logic combine into a single object that will be really difficult to manage mvc framework is defined in system and is a fundamental supported part of the system.web namespace so let's discuss about its architecture so what happens when the request is issued from browser so it goes to first IIS where our application is hosted. From there, it goes to ASP.NET HTTP runtime, which goes to URL router, and then our request is mapped to the MVC HTTP handler, and that request goes to controller. So here the work start. Controller receives the request. It checks the URI, means uniform resource identifier, and checks what model we need to call and what view we need to present to the user and model communicate with the data to fetch the data generally model communicate with the DAL means data access layer because mainly so more specifically in MVC pattern a request are routed to a controller that we have just seen which is responsible for working with the model to perform user action or retrieve result of queries the controller choose the view to display the user data and provides it with any model data it requires if okay the view renders a final page based on the data in the model both the view and the controller depend on the model means model depends on neither the view nor the controller it means there is a separation of concern clearly we can see this is one of the key benefit of the separation this separates allow the model to be built and tested independently of the visual presentation okay so how we can say it is following separation of concern so here model responsibilities is strongly typed views typically uses model view types designed to contain the data to display on that view it means when we are using strongly typed views in that we can directly uh, include the reference of model and user data and view responsibility is they use the razor view engine to embed dotnet code in html markup dotnet code means here we can write c sharp in razor with html there should be minimal logic within the view and logic should be related to presentation content means whatever logic you are writing there on the basis of that we are changing the ui controller respond to the url and how the app respond to a given request i hope it is clear to you now what is mvc and how it works and how it is following separation of concern okay so let's have a look on the life cycle of asp.mvc5 application on a high level note you can see application when we send a request 
HTTP application processing pipeline started and it checks the routing then the then MVC handler work started here an HTTP application processing pipeline you can see first controller action method is maintained then it checks for authentication and authorization and it successfully authenticated then it goes for model binding and action method invocation means which action method will be called and at the end it is return the result execution with the view or a string or json data okay and then the response html goes back to browser okay this is how mvc5 lifecycle works so most common features of MVC that we already know if you are already aware and if you are not then you must be familiar with filters areas routing model winding and validation don't worry as we progress through the course we will discuss all these area in detail okay so separation of concern rest SEO means search engine optimization based URI we use in this testability means test driven development can happen with MVC extensible and pluggable means any view that we are creating we can also reuse that anywhere in the application dependency injection yes we can inject any dependency razor view engine we have already discussed we can write C sharp and HTML in the same component or you can say same view okay we will discuss on this in our upcoming video session strongly type views yes we can use them tag helpers are very important that we will discuss okay so the most important thing of this video is mvc5 features so to use mvc5 let me tell you the basic requirement of that visual studio 2019 is required with dotnet 4.5 at least okay and its initial release was on october 2013 okay as of now there are several minor changes are there that's why minor version are released of mvc5 so very important feature is bootstrap in mvc template auto added means the default template of the mvc5 give you a home controller and about pages depending on the size of your browser you might need to click on the navigation icon to see all option it means the pages bootstrap as you can see on the right corner it is a small snapshot of that you can see it is mvc movie there is a three horizontal line that says there is something hidden the moment you will click over here you will see the menu of that okay and the screen size is auto adjusted okay that's what we are talking about bootstrap in mvc template one asp.net okay this is another important feature means in a single asp.net mvc5 application we can use web form mvc api even signal r as well with unit test that's called one asp.net application okay and asp.net identity means here third party authentication we can use like auth 2.0 in case you want to use with facebook twitter and other so there those things can also integrated within it attribute based routing it is another important part we can pass attribute on the control action method as well asp.net scaffolding means code first approach for operating okay we will discuss as we progress to the code don't worry about any concept if this is not clear at this moment we will discuss in our upcoming video sessions in detail filter override change the specific filter types from the global filter or control level filter okay authentication filter run prior to authorization filter in the asp.net mvc pipeline asp.net web api 2 template also added in this mvc5 okay so the most important part is when to use mvc application we know before mvc application we have asp.net web form application so you must think carefully whether to implement the application by using either the asp.net mvc framework or with asp.net web form model okay the mvc framework does not replace the web form model both have their own advantages and disadvantages okay so before you decide to use the mvc framework or the web form model for a specific website weigh the advantages of mvc over web form if it is not clear for you in the upcoming session i am going to discuss what are the advantages and disadvantages of asp.net mvc and asp.net web form so don't forget to watch that and stay tuned for that with me okay so i hope you like this video if you have any question you can leave a comment so this is one of the way that i have explained all the mvc features application life cycle and other thing if i miss something you can leave a comment for that okay so in our next video we will create as the sp.net mvc5 application 
and we will discuss all the concepts in detail one by one okay thanks for watching have a good day